The ancient Greek myth of Orpheus and Eurydice is a tragic tale of love and the soul's journey to the underworld. Orpheus, a legendary musician, loses his beloved wife Eurydice when she dies from a snake bite. Heartbroken, Orpheus ventures into the underworld, using his musical talents to charm Hades, the god of the underworld, and Persephone, his queen. Moved by his music, they agree to let Eurydice's soul return to the living world under one condition. Orpheus must not look back at her until they reach the surface. Overcome by doubt and fear, Orpheus looks back at the last moment, and Eurydice is lost to him forever. This story explores themes of love, loss, and the fragile boundary between life and the afterlife. In 1907, Dr. Duncan McDougall conducted a controversial experiment to determine whether the human soul has mass. He weighed six terminally ill patients before and after death and reported that each body lost precisely 21 grams at the moment of death. McDougall concluded that this weight difference represented the departure of the soul from the body. While his experiment has been widely criticized for its methodology and small sample size, the idea that the soul has a measurable weight continues to captivate the imagination and has become part of popular culture, symbolizing the mystery of life and death. Modern neuroscience explores consciousness, an emergent property of brain activity, with researchers studying how neural networks give rise to self-awareness. The hard problem of consciousness explaining how subjective experiences arise from physical processes remains one of the greatest challenges in science, leading some to speculate that consciousness may have a non-material dimension akin to the soul. One of the most intriguing aspects of consciousness research is the phenomenon of near-death experiences and DS, where individuals report vivid experiences of leaving their bodies, seeing light, or encountering spiritual beings. Pam Reynolds, a well-known case in the study of near-death experiences and DS, underwent a rare brain surgery in 1991 that required her to be clinically dead no brain activity, no heartbeat, no blood flow before being revived. During this time, Reynolds reported a vivid experience of leaving her body, traveling through a tunnel of light, and encountering deceased relatives. She also accurately described details of the surgery that she could not have known, such as the surgical instruments used in conversations between doctors. Her case is often cited as evidence of the existence of the soul and consciousness beyond the physical body. Studies show that approximately 10 to 20 percent of people who experience cardiac arrest report NDS, despite having no measurable brain activity during the event. These experiences challenge the traditional scientific view that consciousness is entirely dependent on brain function. Another fascinating area is quantum consciousness theories, such as those proposed by physicist Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff, who suggest that consciousness may be rooted in quantum processes within the brain, potentially linking it to the fundamental nature of the universe. You are not a drop in the ocean. You are the entire ocean in a drop. Rumi, in psychology, the soul is often interpreted as a metaphor for the mind, consciousness, or the self. Carl Jung introduced the concept of the collective unconscious, suggesting that the soul is connected to a universal reservoir of shared human experiences and archetypes. Sigmund Freud, however, viewed the soul as a construct of the ego, superego, ID, which are aspects of the psyche that govern behavior and consciousness. More contemporary psychological theories focus on the self as the complex interplay of cognitive processes, emotions, and experiences. The notion of the soul in psychology is often linked to questions of identity, morality, and purpose, with many psychologists arguing that these elements are not supernatural, but deeply rooted in human cognition. Philosophers have long debated the nature of the soul, often challenging religious interpretations. Plato posited that the soul is immortal and pre-exists before inhabiting a physical body. He argued that the soul is divided into three parts, reason, spirit, and appetite, with reason being the highest part, guiding the other two. Aristotle, on the other hand, viewed the soul as the form of the body, giving it life and purpose, 
but not existing independently of it. Rene Descartes famously declared, I think, therefore I am, suggesting that the soul, or mind, is the essence of consciousness and self-awareness, distinct from the physical body. Modern philosophers like Daniel Dennett question the very existence of the soul, arguing that consciousness and self-awareness are products of brain processes, not an independent entity. The unexamined life is not worth living. Socrates, in the age of artificial intelligence and transhumanism, the concept of the soul is being re-examined in new and fascinating ways. Some scientists and technologists speculate about the possibility of uploading human consciousness to a digital format, effectively achieving a form of immortality. This raises profound ethical and philosophical questions. If consciousness can be replicated or transferred, what happens to the soul? Does it persist? Or is it a uniquely biological phenomenon? The merging of human cognition with technology challenges our traditional understanding of the soul, pushing the boundaries of what it means to be human in an increasingly digital world. In ancient Egyptian mythology, the soul, or Ka, undergoes a journey after death, seeking to enter the afterlife. The Book of the Dead is a collection of spells and rituals designed to guide the soul through the challenges it faces in the afterlife. One of the most famous stories from this tradition is the weighing of the heart ceremony. After death, the soul's heart is weighed against the feather of Maat, the goddess of truth and justice. If the heart is lighter than the feather, the soul is granted passage to the afterlife. If heavier, due to sins, the soul is devoured by the demon Amit. This story emphasizes the importance of moral integrity in life, as it directly affects the soul's fate in the afterlife. The soul has been a central theme in literature, symbolizing the inner essence and moral compass of characters. In Goethe's Faust, the protagonist sells his soul to the devil in exchange for knowledge and worldly pleasures, exploring the conflict between spiritual integrity and earthly desires. William Shakespeare often used the concept of the soul to delve into themes of guilt, redemption, and the human condition, as seen in Hamlet and Macbeth. The soul's journey, struggle, and salvation, also central themes in Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, where the poet describes the soul's path through hell, purgatory, and heaven. These literary works use the soul as a metaphor for human struggles, ethical dilemmas, and a quest for meaning. In various religious traditions, the soul is considered the eternal and divine essence of a being. In Christianity, the soul is believed to be created by God, and its destiny lies in eternal communion with God or separation from Him in the afterlife. Hinduism views the soul, or Atman, as a part of the universal soul, Brahman, which undergoes cycles of birth and rebirth reincarnation until it achieves liberation moksha. The Islamic tradition believes that the soul, Ruh, is a divine breath given by Allah, and it will be judged after death based on one's deeds. In Buddhism, while the concept of a permanent soul is rejected, the notion of consciousness or the self is seen as a transient collection of experiences that contribute to the cycle of suffering and rebirth. These religious perspectives emphasize the soul's connection to a higher power and its role in determining the fate of individuals beyond physical death.